Welcome to the Diary of a Ghost Hunter podcast with your frightfully good hosts and paranormal investigators, Anne and Renata. Join the chaos weekly as we tell you what has inspired us, what cases we're investigating, what is driving us round the twist, and the true horror of what goes on in the background of being a ghost hunter. This is a Frightfully Good production. Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of Diary of a Ghost Hunter. And this week we're going to be looking at a few things that have happened during the week. Firstly, we had our Maitland Jail event and boy was there a crisis there. Had to get emergency crew out. Mm -hmm. We also uh, just had a very special visit and a gift. Mm -hmm. And what else? Oh, we're going to look at 28 Days. 28 Days Haunted, yes. Yes. So let's get into it. Okay, so if you haven't seen the first episode and you're not quite sure who we are, We'll just do a brief intro. Very brief. Yep. My name is Renata Daniel. I run Newcastle Ghost Tours. I am a paranormal investigator, tarot card reader and psychic. And I'm Anne Rekovich, own Oz Paratech. I'm a paranormal investigator and I make stuff up on the Oracle cards, but it <laughs> seems to come true. So there we go. There you go. All right. That's it. So Renata, first off, we have got, um, what are we talking about? I can't remember. Maitland Jail. Maitland Jail. Jail. Well, what happened to you? Um, well, um, I got stuck in a lift. So we had uh, a lovely lady uh, with her um, helper, uh, and she has a, uh, a, a, a small disability with walking, and so uh, very hard to climb stairs. And one of the places that we were going to take this lovely lady to was to the chapel at Maitland Jail, which is um, – up a very windy little staircase, which she can't do. But luckily enough, Maitland Jail installed a disability lift. Lucky, huh? Uh, And uh, so we took her around the corner to that. And so we've all loaded on. Um, She has gone on, her helper has gone on, and I have gone on. And we've pressed the button. And it started and then it's abruptly stopped. And we've gone, oh, oh, you've got to hold the button down all the time. So she put the button down again and stopped again. And um, third time lucky, put the finger down, holding the button again. It just went, and then that was it. Then it died. And the alarm came on. So we knew something was badly wrong. And uh, try- I was oblivious to all of this. We're- I was upstairs working the seance uh, area yeah, in the chapel. Trying to scream out, going, help! Try- I had this call on my phone, but my phone was on site or on a tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we actually had to wait until someone actually noticed yeah, I heard that this- we were missing. I thought she was just whinging. I could hear her voice. I thought, oh, she's whinging about something again until I realised, oh, that's right, they were coming up in the lift. Yes. So from where Anne was in the chapel area doing the sounds work, you can actually look down to bo- to the well, bottom where the lift is. Now, so you the can lift have a look. Is. Uh, and so she was staring down at us like God, going, "What's wrong? Like, what's wrong?" And we're saying, "We're stuck." And she thought it was a big joke. But I it did. was I not. A big, but what else can you do? It was do? not a joke. TikTok it. <laughs> so we tried everything. We tried every single button, every combination, anything. Nothing worked. We tried to ring um, the help button. The help button. Yep. Couldn't understand a word the lady was saying. Oh, excuse me. Oh, could, sorry, she, we're recovering from the all-nighter she still. She could not understand a thing. We could not understand her. We gave up in about 10 minutes at shouting at this thing. Uh, we ended up calling the the, uh, the number of the um, the people that actually made the lift, mm-hmm. um, and they uh, got onto a, uh, a an all night um, help help number. And this guy, thank goodness, was not that far from. Yeah, now, but get the this. Area. Uh, he only lived at Talara, which was not far away. Normally, like you said, the guy that was on the week before would have been from the Central Coast, which would have been about a 90-minute drive away. Yeah. So she ended up stuck in there for about 40 minutes with the other two. Now, minutes. I reckon it was the lady that was the carer with um, our guest, because what did the, the carer, no, the, the helper... 
Oh, yes. We were going to go upstairs to do some sounds work uh, and uh, she desperately wanted to go on the Ouija board and she said to uh, uh, she said to us in a loud voice, yeah, let's, let's summon Satan. Let's get the devil here. Um, and we sort of just laughed and joked and said, don't be saying that because... <laughs> we might get stuck in a lift. We'll, <laughs> something bad will happen. <laughs> and lo and behold, there we go. So there's, we're going to lay the blame there. Um, Hello, guys. Welcome to Maitland Jail. See these two people here? They have caused, they have caused a problem and an issue. They have. You know where we are? We are stuck in the lift at Maitland Jail. Now, apparently we did everything right, but this lady here, she called in the devil, right? Yeah, her fault. We were going upstairs to do the Ouija boards, but this one here said, oh, let's see if we can bring a demon through. Well, here we are. Stuck in the lift. Stuck in the lift at Maitland Jail. Your fault. Yay! Just saying, your fault. <laughs> not mine. Not No, not yours, not yours. I'm innocent. This one here. And do you hear that noise? Yeah, that's been going on for the last half hour. Right. And we've all got migraines. And we're here. There's, there's, there's the rest of the team out there. Yep. Now, apparently, someone is coming. Someone, don't know when. Someone is coming, but we are definitely in the lift here at the jail. No. We're sure. There's no one up there. Some sort of spirit it, look, it, stopped it. It feels like a movie that we are stuck in. Absolutely. It, it could only really really happen to me. It could be on Friday the 13th. It could be on Friday the 13th. It could be. It's Halloween instead. <laughs> right. I haven't even got the hat. Doesn't Jason come out on Halloween? Oh, please, don't. Jason. Oh, oh, I need. Oh, I need. Oh, I need. You, you should have got the screen mask. Oh. Come I come out. should have. <laughs> Oh, no, he wears the other one, doesn't he? Okay. Yeah, he well, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever is watching, we'll let you know what happens Bye. from this Stop. point. Bye. 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 Uh, all right. Now, oh, oh, the other thing I was going to uh, bring up this week is uh, we, we've, we have a team, a very strong team, uh, and, you know, sometimes in the background you don't realise what's going on. Um, it's, it's been one of those weeks where we've had to have some meetings and things to try and help. What we, ha what can we say it as? I don't know. Different personalities. Um, yeah. uh, maybe when you become a volunteer on a team, you're needing to be fulfilled in some way or other. You, there is something that you want to do. You want to give, um, that you need, to to help. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure my microphone was on. I just suddenly blanked out. Um, and sometimes you may not be getting what you want and a bit of grumbling may start to happen. So we jumped on. As soon as we heard there were some people that weren't happy, we jumped on and we got the whole team together and we said, look, guys, let's sort all this out. Let's talk about it. If anyone's unhappy, speak up straight away. Don't go off in the background talking to each other and making mountains out of molehills. Um, but we have an awesome team and we, we want to look after them. We want everyone to be happy. So in your workplace... If you are having issues and you need to use your voice, always use your voice because our volunteers are what make us who we are. Mm. Our volunteers saved our life. Uh, oh, they saved us on Friday night. A thousand times over on Friday. They are absolutely superb and wonderful. And they would just take over. So yeah. we would have issues here or something was happening over there and they'd just step up, they'd run everything yeah. Everything was smooth. And when you got stuck calm. in the lift, I had to abandon what I was doing in the seance and then, like, help with the, getting the, the guy in to rescue you and then running around and trying to work out how to get them out. And um, but they, We did get them out. They, they were all rescued. But um, it was because of our volunteers. They stepped up and without even having to say, can you do this, can you do mm. that, they just went and did it. Yeah. yeah. So the, always you've got to look after your volunteers um, I mean, it may come to a stage sometimes where we can't fulfil the need of what they need from us, and mm. you know that's okay. Sometimes you grow apart, and uh, but you've just got to do the best you can. Mm. 
Now, we, we did have, during the tour, we had one uh, young fellow who thought that he, that he was being choked. Mm. Um, we had a few people who noticed dark shadows. Uh, one of them, uh, a very staunch uh, sceptic, could probably even kind of categorise her as a bit of a cynic, never considering that anything would ever happen. Um, and she actually saw uh, a full-bodied sort of a dark shadow come out of one of the cells. And when we asked her at the end, she still kind of went, well, I, I really don't know. I don't understand you, what happened. Your brain can't comprehend I, it I, I don't understand what happened, but it was that a ghost? I'm not sure. Yeah. So she's still not willing to sort of jump the fence. Yep. Um, we had a number of people um, who sort of had experiences. They said that the, the, the jail had ramped up. Um, from any of the other times that they had come before. so And then we had one person who said, I haven't seen a ghost, I haven't heard a ghost, I've had nothing happen to me, I want my money back. <laughs> so when you go into an experience like that, with that sort of mentality, the ghosts aren't going to interact with you because they don't find it respectful. So, um, yeah, you always go in open and willing and not expecting them to perform like monkeys because otherwise they're just going to go, I'll adjust my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but overall it went really good. It went really, very, really very well. Good. But it takes us... Oh, 48 good, hours. Yeah, 48 hours to recover yeah. from that because we did two tours back to back and yesterday I just lay around with drool pouring out of my mouth. <laughs> I was unable to do anything um, other than lay on the lounge and drink coffee. Yeah. Right, what else are we up to? Oh, we just had an interview with the USA this afternoon yeah, we as did. well, and that was awesome. We had um, Jen and Dean, was Jen it? Jen and Dean, yeah. yeah. And Dean turns out to be an Aussie fellow. Untold radio. Aussie fellow, oh, pardon me, uh, um, an Aussie fellow who yep. now lives in America in um, a cabin in the woods. Yeah, Dr. <gasps> Dean Bertram. <gasps> um, Ber Bertram, yeah. And uh, he specialises in American history. So there you go. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. It was really awesome... good questions. Yeah. Um, and actually, my brain still wasn't functioning too well, so I don't know what I said in some things. But Renata, Renata, you sounded super intelligent. I oh, was no, so impressed. I had a moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that will be up later at some stage and uh, we'll send you a link to that so that you can listen in. Um, just so that we can prove to you that we can actually string a couple of sentences together. <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> uh, without, without having to make it funny uh, and say something intelligent occasionally, yes. They're so asking us about our thoughts on Halloween and a whole lot of things. So that was really interesting. Yeah, and look, we've had loads of really good feedback on our first episode. Mm. Lots of people have asked questions and said uh, things they would like to hear from us and, and particularly experiences that we've had as well. So... Mm -hmm. um, Getting stuck in the lift was one of those experiences. <laughs> I think they wanted some ghostly ones. But we don't have a lot of time. We've had um, somebody just call in and give us a gift. Let me show you what they yeah. got. Now so you explain what it is. We got a phone call during the week um, from uh, the beautiful James, who I've known for many, many years. He's been out of the paranormal scene for quite a bit of time, but he's sort of getting uh, interested back again. Um, but he was going through some of the stuff that he had in his home and he said, um, look, I, I think I've got something that you might like, um, a bit of a trigger object, and uh, I'd like to give it to you. I'd like to gift it to you. Uh, so he arrived this afternoon with his beautiful wife, Justine, in their hearse. So they, so they, yes, have, a a hearse. they have a Cadillac. Miss Lily. Miss Lily. Uh, who is a hearse that has come over from um, Las Vegas. Yeah. So she worked did, uh, hard in Las Vegas from the 1960s and uh, she was purchased, I think, from somebody else here and brought over to Australia and they have purchased it from... 1964 it was, some, yeah. This particular gentleman um, over in Geelong and bought it to Newcastle. And they go out and they do uh, different shows and things, car shows and everything. I'll with put them. a little video up on um, YouTube yeah, when they drove off. Yeah, she is beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. So they came over in their hearse and they gave us this beautiful little gift. So what we're looking at is a wooden uh, horse with articulated joints 
and it has a uh, real horsehair mane and tail. Uh, originally, it was painted black, and it came with a book. Now, this is from the 1920s. Yeah. And... Uh, it was what came with the book. So they, they've tried to find the book but haven't been able to get the book. Uh, but they have gifted us this to go in our little paranormal collection. And they they said they think it's got an attached spirit of a little boy with this particular um, horse. And we'll have pictures up on our uh, Facebook page. And uh, you can, of course, watch this video on YouTube as well as the podcast. Uh, but it is glorious. So the book was Black Beauty. Oh, the yeah, forgot that part. <laughs> and it was originally uh, all painted in black. Yeah. And so when you went to the shops to buy it, you could buy the book itself or you could buy it with this toy. Now, this would have taken someone ages yeah, to beautiful. make. I wonder how many were made of this. And have survived. But it is beautifully carved in timber. And, yeah, it's all put together. Um, it's all beautifully made. And they've had it mounted. And, yeah, it's, it's been mounted. It wasn't mounted originally. But fancy going to the shops, buying your child a book and having this come with it as the toy I'm horse that, obsessed. that you would have played with. How beautiful is that? Now, whoever owned it beforehand took all the, the black off. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm tempted to repaint it. No, don't. No, no I know. don't. I'm, I'm tempted to repaint no. it. <laughs> no, it must stay as it is. I'll see if I can find any information about that as um, something that would have been available to buy. Maybe mm. there's some history behind it that we can attach to it. Yeah. I think it's fabulous. I was blown away when I, I saw it, and I think it has come to the right place people to it look has. after it up to this it's point. It's going up so. with uh, our Annabelle <coughs> and our Robert Dole yeah. up there. Um, now, look, our last little topic for today. People have been asking us, what do we think of 28 Days Haunted? Um, I have watched, I think, two episodes of it. Uh, and I would just like to say that it is overly dramatic. Mm. Overly dramatic. Uh, I haven't been able, I haven't had time to watch the rest of it. So what did you think? Um, I talked uh, about this to a few people during our Maitland Jail ghost tour and uh, our beautiful friend Joanne said, wait until the last three seconds. Watch the last three seconds before the um, names credits, and everything, the credits, the credits yeah. and that will help you work out what this is all about. And I'm not going to tell you if you haven't watched it. I finished watching it last night. So the last three credits will, I think, put everything, uh, the last three seconds, three or four seconds, will put everything into the right framework um, as to what is the, what this show kind of is really about. I found that it, um, I don't think it showed positively what the work of the paranormal investigators um was all about as with all of these types of shows it's produced to an nth of its life yeah so and it's you've produced got, to entertain yeah so you've got lots and lots of hours of work um and most of that isn't shown uh, whatever is captured uh, is put together so that it is as sensational as possible um, there's a lot of sensationalism. Yep. There's a lot of stuff about demons in every single one of the places that these people go to. Yep. Um, it kind of runs in a script where they all arrive, they all find... It's instantly yeah, activity. Yeah, they, they find demons and then towards the end it's all about whether they move, remove or do anything with the demons. Um, so that's kind of the way the scripting goes. It sounds to me as if they've set it all up for the next one and it works on the theory of uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren who came up with this uh, hypothesis that you really require 28 days uh, to really get in contact with what the story of um, a haunted site is all about. 
as the um, spirits uh, unveiled themselves to you and gave you their story. You're immersing now, yourself, really, yeah. Yeah, these guys uh, went into this how these houses or these these properties, um, and had no mobile phone, no TV, no outside no connection, no. Um, internet, all they were doing was recording for the full 28 days. And so this series that you got was um, the culmination of their their 28-day adventure. Um, Of course, the end of it says, well, this must work. Of course. Because they all got uh, what they needed to get by the end of that 28 days. So it must work. Um, But, yeah, look, would I do a 28-day I'd See? be bored. Oh God! Uh, I, if if it Who wasn't truly you? look, these I someone saw a comment. To, someone I, had to shut that down, those places down for twenty eight days with no work. And those people didn't work for twenty eight days. Yeah, that's, that's they a worked big with commitment. their family for twenty eight days. Yeah, let me think about it now. Hang on, no, but <laughs> that's a huge commitment for a, a historic site not to take. Um, yeah. Money well, for they would be paid. Days. They would be paid, and plus the notoriety, no, notoriety that I can't say. It. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. The fame they're going to get from this episode airing or this mm. series will boost their sales beyond anything. We're actually going to do uh, an episode on some of these locations on True Hauntings podcast. Yes. yes. So make sure you stay tuned yeah. to watch those coming out. Um, my now, question is: How did they pick the people? How were they? Um, how were the investigators chosen? Did they have to have a certain set of beliefs? Did they have to believe in demons to be part of this series? Because that is just a belief system, mm-hmm. a personal belief system. Um, and there was one question I had where Shane, who was on uh, Dave Schrader's show, mm-hmm. the Holzer Files, I remember when they started out, they said, oh, it's, you know, poor Shane, he's not an investigator. He's just being thrown out into the, the field and he's having to cope with it. Shane is in this series as a seasoned investigator of 10 years or more. Oh. So I'm a little confused mm. over that, unless I've heard something wrong somewhere. Now, Dave had a huge rant on his page. Oh, did he? Yeah, about um, how people are, are treating the people that are being shown on the show. He said that some of his uh, best friends oh, or, or people that he knows are on the show and he would vouch for them as very, yeah. very good and decent people and they're being portrayed in a different light and they're well, he's sick and tired of people bagging It's the way out, it's been edited together. Yeah, bagging out some of these people. Uh, you wouldn't meet a more serious and dedicated um, uh, medium as the lady that was the Cindy, I think, or one of them. Oh, Cindy on, on it. Uh, so he had a, a big a big rant on his page about it. But, yeah. you know, you've got to look at it from the point of view of you're looking at, at this stuff and you're going, oh, yeah, this, yeah, it's just, it's been, like I said, it's been edited to... Um, and I don't know also that a lot of the phenomena and the bangs and the knocks that are going on, is it truly a paranormal phenomena or is it... Someone saying, oh, it's getting boring, we need to do something, go make some banks. And the investigators don't know. Mm. They've got no idea that it's a man-made thing going on. Mm. I, Yeah, there's too many questions to it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, if you haven't watched it, you'll want to watch it now. Yep. Uh, and watch it until the very end. Oh, now the I'm going to go very watch end. the whole thing now. Good on you. Yeah. All right, we have to wrap it up because we're going to get to our Spooky Sunday show. So thank you all. Uh, if you'd like to leave your comments and your thoughts in the uh comment section down below make sure you've subscribed hit the bell if you're watching on youtube so you get notifications for all our stuff that's going up and also on uh the uh, pages where you are not pages what do you call it the the podcast pages if you're listening there please review us and leave us a oh, five star five star would be great <laughs> um and share it amongst your friends let us know that let people know that we're out here doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Words are getting hard. All right, guys. See you on the dark side. Bye. Stay, Stay spooky. spooky. And don't forget, be frightfully, frightfully good. good. Bye.